Mama, is God real? Is marriage for life? Do we have to be baptized? Is drinking really wrong? Well, that's your interpretation. Where do I come from? Do we really have to have authority for what we do? Where is God when I need Him? Rise up, O men of God. His kingdom tarries long. Bring Him the day of brotherhood and in the night of wrong. Hello, friends, and welcome again to The Shield of Faith. My name is Wes Garland, and I am a minister of the Churches of Christ in East Tennessee. And alongside with us, as always, we have Scott Gant. Hey, Wes. He is a preacher of the Philippi Church of Christ in Tompkinsville, Kentucky. And alongside with us, as always, we have Eric Pickock. Hey, Wes. He is the preacher of the uh, Gamaliel Church of Christ mm -hmm. in Gamaliel, Kentucky. But friends, we hope and pray that for the next 30 minutes that you'll take out your Bible, paper, and pen and will study with us about the subject which is at hand. Because today we're dealing with a very prevalent issue even in the Churches of Christ. Absolutely. And also in denominationalism itself. Mm -hmm. And it is on the subject of instruments of music. Mm -hmm. Now, guys, whenever we start thinking about um, just the main problem mm -hmm. the, of instruments of music, I've talked to people before, especially one who was a member of the Christian church. And I was talking to her, and I just lately just came out and asked her, uh, I said, what if I could show you something in Scripture that basically says that you cannot use instruments of music, that it's actually sinful? Mm -hmm. She said, I just love my piano way too much. Mm -hmm. And that's the mindset of the people, not yeah. only in denominationalism, right. because they think there's nothing wrong with it. Right. That you don't have to have authority for everything you do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That you can do what is pleasing to yourself because the audience has actually been changed in, in churches uh, today and that is, the audience is no longer God. Right. But it's whatever is pleasing to self. And that's what mm -hmm. basically brings about this whole entire problem of instruments of music. That's right. When you take the aim and purpose from, of worship away from God, mm -hmm. who's it's intended to, mm -hmm. then you're going to have it focus more internally upon the people. That's right. And mm -hmm. then it's going to be subjective. It's whatever exactly. anybody wants. That's right. And, you know, exactly. and, and that's been a problem with God's people in the past and it's continued to be a problem today. That's right. Especially in the denominational world where, you know, the word of biblical authority is like a foreign word. Mm -hmm. But especially now it's creeping up in the church of our Lord mm -hmm. through um, not understanding how the Bible authorizes or doing away with pattern theology mm -hmm. that we have from the New That's Testament. Right. That's right. And so when you get these subjective feelings, it's what I want or what I think's right, you know, anything can come in under the umbrella of subjectivism. Mm -hmm. So what we need to understand is we need to keep our aim and our focus upon God as the person that we're exactly. to worship. And we're to worship Him in spirit and truth according to John chapter two, uh, 4 and verses 24. So when we keep the aim upon Him, we'll always try to worship being pleasing unto Him right, and not right. unto ourselves. You know, Scott, you, you ask somebody, okay, you ask somebody just like you, you said, you asked that lady, uh, mm -hmm. you was questioning her about instruments of music. Well, you go and you ask somebody, why do you use the instrument? Well, the answer you'll get probably be, uh, well, that's just what we like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's what feels good. That's the way we've always done it. Mm -hmm. And you can think of a thousand different answers that people may give. Right. And every single one of them will not have anything to do with biblical authority or this right. is what the Bible teaches me that we need mm -hmm. to do. Right. Now, when we think of passages like Colossians 3 and verse 17, mm -hmm. which denominationalists will put up on their... Uh, they'll put in their flyers and they'll put in their mm -hmm. uh, uh, tracks and they'll put, in, they'll put it on their uh, uh, billboards on the outside of their buildings. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do and word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. They'll put that up. They'll display that. They'll try to proclaim that that's what they do. Mm -hmm. But yet, when you ask them, where is then the authority or right. where in Scripture do we have or find where individuals are to play the instrument right. mm -hmm. and worship to God? Now, we just break that passage down. Whatever you do in word. That means the way in which you talk, the right. way things, the in things which you teach. The things you say, the Everything. things you uh, come out of your mouth, right. e even the things you, you are sing. saying in worship, the things you're right. praying, That's the right. things that the preacher is preaching. Whatever you do in word, mm -hmm. then whatever you do in deed, 
-hmm. the things you do, the places right. you go, the right. activities. That involves not just activities in worship. That involves activities that you do in your own personal life. Whatever mm -hmm. you do in word and whatever you do in deed, you do all by the authority of God. You have to have mm -hmm. biblical authority for, for what you do. Everything you in, do. That's right. In, that's right. All right. So when we think about biblical authority for how we worship God, right. we have mm -hmm. to have authority how we worship God. Right. And the question then is, how do we get authority? How do we know we worship, our worship is acceptable to the Lord? Well, the way in which you ask that question is, is there, has there been a standard by which God has put an establishment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the way in which we are to worship Him? Well, yes, He is. has, because mm -hmm. let me ask you this. In John 4 and verse 24, God is the Spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him. Notice it's must worship Him. That's must. That's in, an imperative. That's right. That, that's something that cannot be neglected. The, exactly. It's not it's an a option. It's a necessity. Right. Mm -hmm. He says, must worship Him mm -hmm. in spirit and in truth. That's right. right. If there has not been a standard by the way in which we are allowed to worship Him, right. to worship Him in spirit, right. and uh, the way in which He wants us to do, then the possibility of having a truth there right. is thrown out the window. Mm -hmm. right. But again, you cannot throw that word truth out of that passage. Uh -huh. well, we want people to understand and believe every word that's written in our Bibles, our New Testaments and the Old Testaments is written there for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it, they mean what they say. Mm -hmm. And when we come across a word, it, it's not a subjective word. Mm -hmm. it, the Bible teaches, means what it says and says what it means. That's, exactly. that's what we can come to the conclusion. Now, are we under dis different dispensations? Of course. Mm -hmm. We're not under the law of Moses anymore. Mm -hmm. If we were under the law of Moses, where is the sacrifices that we have to offer? All those things, burning incense, we're talking about 600, of our children? 600, <laughs> yes, 600 plus exactly. mm -hmm. laws and regulations that we would be under. Mm -hmm. But Christ has taken that away. Mm -hmm. But always where you have something that somebody that's pleasing to somebody or that they want or that they want to try to derive to pull something out of the Old Testament, they'll go back and get something out of the Old Testament that they like. That's right. Mm -hmm. But what you have to do is, what you have to realize, if you bring one thing out of the Old Testament that's authorized, all. you have to bring it all. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and mm -hmm. how can we bring something from, uh, especially we're talking about these instruments of music today. Mm -hmm. Well, think about this. In Romans chapter 10, this whole situation of the instruments of music really falls into play right here. Uh, because notice what he says here, starting in verse uh, uh, 2. He says, uh, For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Mm -hmm. He says, For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, and righteousness is simply defined as the actions in which man does to make one right in the sight right. of God. How to make one right in the sight of God. Exactly. For they being ignorant or not knowing of the way in which man is supposed to live and to act and to walk in the way in which is right in the sight of God, and seeking to establish their own righteousness. Basically, hey, I can do it this way and God will still accept it. Mm -hmm. Now notice what he says here. He says, they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. Therefore, right. they're doing it in vain. Mm -hmm. Right. That's right. They're doing it in vain. It's much like, uh, it's much like uh, you have Nadab and Abihu in Leviticus chapter 10. Mm -hmm. right. God has always regulated his worship. Right. God has always specified how he wants us to worship. Now you go into mm -hmm. that old covenant on the law of Moses and you know from the book of uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, uh, and Numbers and Deuteronomy, you have there the uh, Pentateuch that describes to us the law of Moses, mm -hmm. that the things that they mm -hmm. were to do in regards to worship to God. Right. Mm -hmm. He regulated on that. So in Leviticus chapter 10, Nadab and Abihu, they had already been governed or told and explained the type and kind of fire that they were to use. Absolutely. And, and that's right. In regard to uh, uh, the incense that was to be provide, or put on there. Mm -hmm. So in, in Exodus chapter 30, 1 through 8, God legislated. This is the kind of fire that you're to use. Mm -hmm. He told them, he specified, this is the kind of fire. Now, Leviticus chapter 10, I don't know where they got the fire. I don't know what kind of fire it was. I don't know if they just burn a log in the woods and, and got mm -hmm. it from there. I know it was not got from the place the Lord asked them to get it. Mm -hmm. It was not the kind and type of fire the Lord asked them to use. Right. Therefore, the Lord said that it was profane, it was strange fire, it was useless fire. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, he had not commanded them to use it, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And so the fire went up to the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we see that over in chapter 9, that at first, at, well, at the very last verse of uh, chapter 8, it said in verses 36, it says, So Aaron and his sons did all the things that the Lord had commanded by the hands of Moses. Mm -hmm. And then you go on into the ninth chapter of the book of Leviticus, and it says the sons of Aaron, in verses 9, chapter 9, verse 9, it says the sons of Aaron brought the blood to him and dipped it into his finger into the blood and put it on the horns of the altar and poured it on the blood and on the base of the altar, and uh, but the fat and the kidneys, and it lays out this legislation. They were already how, how they, they, This is a part of their worship mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. And in verse 16 it says, and he brought the burnt offering and offered it according to the prescribed manner. Mm -hmm. So they were doing good up until mm -hmm. this point in time. It says that they had done all that the that Aaron and his sons did all the Lord commanded. They were doing it in the prescribed manner. But all of a sudden in Acts, I mean uh, Leviticus, excuse me, Leviticus chapter 10, we see that they changed the order. They didn't do it in the prescribed manner like Eric was talking about. They used strange, profane fire that God had not commanded them. Mm -hmm. You know, most people would say, well, fire's fire. It doesn't matter where you get your fire. You know, you got fire here, you got fire there. It doesn't really matter. It's only but it one matters. thing there, Scott. It, it's a small thing. Fire it's only is, one thing. Isn't fire fire? That's right. But evidently, it was fire that was profane. It was vain. God specified the kind of fire that he wanted. Absolutely. And that, for com that completely eliminated any other kind of fire. Same thing could be applied to Noah and the ark. Right. God, mm -hmm. when he told Noah to build that ark, did he tell him to build it out of oak wood? Did no. he tell him to, to build it out of cedar wood? No. Did he tell him to build it, build it out of pecan? No. Right. He told him to build it out of gopher wood. And mm -hmm. if it had been built out of any other wood, the ark would have sank. That's right. It was, now, how, how, it was the specific. Question. God was specified the kind and type of wood that was to be used. Now suppose, uh, suppose uh, uh, Noah's wife, his darling wife, said, I would love for my bedroom to be trimmed out in pecan. Oh, yeah, I like pecan. Oh, I love pecan wood. <laughs> so she go out and she get some pecan wood and they, they trim that boat out in pecan. That was not what the Lord asked them to do. Absolutely. Suppose she said, oh, I'd love to have an extra window over the dining room, oh, in the dining room, or in this room. I'd like right. to have an extra window here. And so they designed the boat so it would have an extra window. It that's, would not, have that's not what God specified. That's right. He gave them the dimensions, the length, the width, the depth, the number of floors, the number of windows, the number of doors. He gave them the kind of wood. He gave them specifics on how to build the wood. Now those specifics were not matters of option. Right, they did absolutely. not have an option in the matter. Now there were some optional matters in building the heart. They had the option of using this kind of saw or that kind of saw. They had the option of using this kind of chisel or that kind of chisel. Mm -hmm. Using a, a big hammer, a small hammer. They had those kinds of options. They did not have option in what God legislated. Right. God, He specifies for us today how we're to worship Him. He right. specifies the kind of music that we're to use. Mm -hmm. That's not a matter of option. Absolutely. That is a matter of obligation. Mm -hmm. Now, the matter of option that we have is: Are we going to uh, we going to come up with our own songs? Are we going to use a songbook? Are we going to uh, uh, just sing uh, from memory? Are right. we going to turn to the Book of Psalms and sing the Psalms? and hymns of the Lord, Right. Mm -hmm. what are we going to use? Those are matters of option. Right. See, Absolutely. the things in which man thinks are very small matters mm -hmm. are actually great matters to God because it goes against His standard. That's right. right. Now, whenever you think about it, I want to present some things uh, to the audience here about some points about just about instrumental music and how it's sinful because, number one, uh, the New Testament commands to sing. Mm -hmm. right. now, whenever that's a specific. You, that's a very specific thing. Whenever you look at every single example or every just one of them. whenever you think about singing, mm -hmm. it's all brought about in that they are singing, 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 sung, sang, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. At never point in time did they ever say that they accompanied it with an instrument. That's right. right. Whenever, when, number two, the New Testament does not authorize it, what we've already right. talked about. Right. Uh, whenever we're thinking about Colossians 3 and verse 17. Mm-hmm. Not one time 
uh, does it ever say that you can do whatever you want? He That's says, right. whatever you do, that right. covers every single bit of everything you can ever right. think about. And just prior to that, Colossians 3, verse 17, Verse 16. Guess, what you, guess what you have in verse 16? You have the prescribed you have order the, and mm -hmm. way, that's right. the instrument in which you're to use in mm -hmm. the right. song. It's the mm -hmm. heart. That's, that's right. the instrument. It's mm -hmm. not, uh, and, and one thing I want to make mention here, if one person, if it's commanded uh, that w one person to use it, we all have to use it. That's right. Because that's everybody right. would have to be able to use the instrument. If it was commanded to sing and play, if they, that, this is where they go and they say, well, it doesn't say not to. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, if you, ha if you can get authority for what, you, what the Bible says not to do, where does the Bible say not to pray to the devil? Where right. does the Bible say uh, not to pray to Mary? That's where right. does the Bible say, mm -hmm. you know, you could go on, what does the Bible say mm -hmm. not to That's do? That's right. You, we don't get our authority from the silence of the Scriptures. That's right. Because, we, because it's just like what we are going to earlier. Because when God legislates what to do, that automatically right. excludes everything else. He legislated the fire for them to get. And, that excluded and that other kind of fire. Uh, 10 and verses gopher 1 and wood, 2. The gopher wood Noah's Ark excluded uh, pine and cedar and all other kinds of wood. Right. You know, one argument that denominationalists will use in regards to instruments of music is the, the word solo. Right. Mm -hmm. And they will say that the word solo means to pluck or to twang. I'll mm -hmm. agree with that. That's, that, exactly, that's, what that's exactly what it means. The word solo means to pluck or to twang. The word solo is found in Ephesians 5, verse number 19. Right. And it's translated in the King James Version, New King James Version, making melody. Now notice, interesting to this subject, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making or solo, uh -huh. plucking or twanging right. in your heart to the Lord. Right. Now What's here, the instrument? Here though? is what we have to understand. He says, yes, you are to pluck or to twang, but then he specifies the instrument that is to be used. He specifies what we are to do. It is making melody mm -hmm. in your heart. See, so right. whenever you really study the verse, it really comes with an understanding of that. He doesn't want you just to be singing just for let the words be words. Right. He's wanting you to really have it coming from your heart. That's right. right. And that's the whole reason why that's he's right. bringing that out here. You are to pluck or to twang the strings of the heart. And something that's interesting with the word solo, if not mistaken, every single time that it's used, it always classifies itself with an instrument around it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It always does. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so and with the instrument that, here we have is the heart. The heart. Right. It's the heart strings. You know, we, yes. we've said that a lot of times. Pluck the heart strings. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. That doesn't mean uh, an organ. That doesn't mean a piano. That doesn't mean a guitar. That doesn't mean you, you can't fit that in there even if you wanted That's to. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you did, everybody would have to do it. He says, That's make right. melody in your heart. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, you just, you've already... You're speaking you've already, to one another. You've right. already mm -hmm. pointed You're out. Speaking. You've already pointed out, Scott, this instruction is given to each and every single individual that is in the congregation. Right. Mm -hmm. Thus, if it is the case, and it's not, that uh, we use the piano, then every single individual would have to be using the piano. If right. it was a guitar, everybody would have to use a guitar. Right. He's speaking to every individual. And Absolutely. he's not saying you play an instrument, mm -hmm. a mechanical instrument. He's saying you play the instrument of the heart. Absolutely. You pluck the strings and the chords of the heart as you sing with the heart to the Lord. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, something and else to think about. that is part of this worshiping in spirit That's exactly and right. in truth. truth. That's right. You know, here's the truth about it. Mm -hmm. The truth is we have to sing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the spirit is, is that we are going to pluck the heart strings of our heart. That's mm -hmm. the spirit. That's the attitude. That's the disposition mm -hmm. in which we're to sing, mm -hmm. making melody in our hearts. That's and right. so we have those two. First of all, the truth, speaking, singing, Mm -hmm. Not playing or not playing or pounding or beating or mm -hmm. you know, we're not to do any of that. That's not mm -hmm. what the scripture says. That's right. Let's let's let the scriptures speak for themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. so the what we see is God specified a kind of music. Right. Like in mm -hmm. Ephesians five nineteen, Colossians three sixteen, a kind of music. It was specific. Right. The mm -hmm. kind was uh, a acapella singing. Right. Right. That is the kind. Now, if you change that, you change from one kind of music to another kind of music. Mm -hmm. right. when, you add, when you take a cappella music, which is just using the voice, mm -hmm. which, by the way, why would anybody want to uh, try to make the, the, the most beautiful sound 
that has ever been heard the voice. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to make that any better than right. it already is? You cannot reproduce the beautiful chords of the, the voice right. by Again, any mechanical instrument. Right. The so audience you know, has to be changed. That's right. Right. So and the you, thing about you, it is, it is in that situation is, is people think it makes them sound better. Mm -hmm. People think, and that's the problem, when people start thinking and don't look into, and stop looking to God's Word for this, mm -hmm. then that's the problem. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. just what you think. That's right. and if that's what you think, that's what I think, and that's what that's he, right. and we can, we can, that's just subjective. Yes, yeah. and so when a person incorporates the mechanical instrument, it changes from a cappella to instrumental. Right. Mm -hmm. Same thing applies. We could use hand clapping as an instrument. Right. We could use stomping of the feet and 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 uh, things like that that changes the kind of music. That's right. exactly what it does. And what we need to specify the type of music here. We're not talking about secular music or mm -hmm. music that we listen to on the radio or mm -hmm. like country, rock and roll, all those type of music because it, it qualifies the music. Mm -hmm. Spiritual songs. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now when we're even if we're in the home. When we're uh, speaking and to one another in psalms, hymns, mm -hmm. and spiritual songs, mm -hmm. that qualifies the type of music, spiritual songs. Acapella Anytime, mm -hmm. acapella music with spiritual songs. Give Anytime mm -hmm. you're, you that's go to the Lord, command that's in God's any specific area. command about the specific type of music. That's right. The specific type of music is spiritual songs. So anytime, a lot of people say, well, it's okay if I go home and I, I play my guitar to gospel songs and that's okay. You can't regulate that. Well, the Bible what? regulates it for you. It says when you speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and, and with spiritual songs, that's the qualifying music. Mm -hmm. The only instrument you can use is the heart. It's mm -hmm. a cappella music. Mm -hmm. that's, right. that's the only instrument. And, it's, right. and you know, like we said earlier, it's given, the command is given, Colossians 3.16, Ephesians 5.19, the command is given to every single individual. Right. Everybody is to be singing. Right. I am not to be silent while I'm worshiping God. That's that's right. Right. I am to be singing with everybody else. That's right. Right. Now, the same thing goes is it is required that everybody sing. Right. And it... And so that means that we can't have choirs. A absolutely. We cannot have uh, praise teams, if that's what you, if you want to call them. It's just mm -hmm. a highfalutin word for a choir, if you ask me. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. and where you have these individuals that are in the audience that have the microphones that's elevating their voice above everybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, that's not uh, uh, no authority for that. We have to sing everybody collectively together right. to the Lord. Right, with, absolutely. Uh, with the specific kind of music to be used, mm -hmm. uh, a cappella right. music. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, whenever you think about it, the New Testament specifies the same in every single right. area. The New Testament does not authorize it. Mm -hmm. Number three, there is no New Testament example. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's right. one of the four ways in which the Bible authorizes right. is by example. And if there is no example that can be found in that's it, right. you can't use it. And the West, the example that people want to use, they want to use the example of David. Right. David was under the Old Testament. David was under the Old Law. He went to Jerusalem to worship God. He mm -hmm. was required to go to Jerusalem. How many? How many? He had to make sacrifices. That's right. How many people <laughs> want to go? That's how many people want to go to Jerusalem to worship God. How many people want to offer sacrifices and incense and worship on the Sabbath day? You see, the problem is, is that individuals want to pick and choose and have this buffet exactly. type style religion. Right. That they just get to pick, go to any part of the Bible, pick any and everything they want out of it, and leave the rest. Right. Mm -hmm. Well. You see, I'm saying that the New Covenant teaches us that God specified a kind of music. It's, it's a cappella music. David was under an other, another dispensation. He worshiped God in a completely different way. Right. We don't worship God in that way. Why don't you meet on the Sabbath then? Right. Why don't you mm -hmm. offer uh, sacrifices? Why don't you watch worship in the temple? Yeah. Why don't you? Right. There's so many things that people want to pull out of the Old Testament right. and mm -hmm. use and hang their hat on, but they don't want to That's pull right. all of it. And besides mm -hmm. that, Scott, they were commanded, they were commanded under the Old Covenant in many cases to use the instrument. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, in Second Chronicles chapter 29, notice what it says. And he stationed the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals and stringed instruments and with harps according to the commandment of David of Gad, the kings of Nashur, and Nathan the prophet, for thus was the commandment of the Lord by the prophets. Right. 
So he, yes, it was commanded. That's right. He said it was the commandment of the Lord right. by the prophets to have the symbols, to have the stringed instruments and the harps. He said it was a commandment of the Lord. Now let me ask those that want to apply this today. Where is your command in the New Testament by right. the Lord right. to use? If, you have, if everything you have to do, you have to have authority for, according to Colossians 3 and verse 17, then where is your authority? Mm -hmm. Here we have another example in the book of James. James says, here's what Brother James says. He says, if any man among you suffering, let him pray. That's right. That's right. Let him pray. Mm -hmm. If, if any anyone is cheerful, what do you need to do? Let him sing. Let him sing songs. Mm -hmm. Not play the instrument. Mm -hmm. We give a specific, if you're suffering, you need to pray. That's right. That's mm -hmm. what you need to do. James right. says that. James says, if you are cheerful, sing mm -hmm. songs. Mm -hmm. Not That's play right. an instrument. So we have in Colossians chapter 3 and verses 16 to sing. Mm -hmm. We have in Ephesians chapter 5 and 19 to sing. Mm -hmm. We have here in James chapter 5 and verses 13 to sing. That's right. We don't have any, there is no notion in the New Testament where any instrument of music was brought in and was mm -hmm. authorized by King Jesus of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I, I want us to understand that we are under a pattern theology mm -hmm. today. It, when we go to the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews 8, he talks about pattern, mm -hmm. and we have to do all things according to the pattern. It says in verses 5, it says, Who serve a copy, a shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle, and said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you in the mount. Mm -hmm. So they had a pattern in the Old Testament. We have a pattern today, Second Timothy. That's right. Uh, one in verse th 13, we have a pattern right. that we have to go mm -hmm. by. That's right. Also, and according to Romans 6 and verse 17, mm -hmm. we obey that pattern, that form of doctrine That's which right. was mm -hmm. delivered and, unto and, us. And, and items of worship, even though they're similar both in the Old and the New Covenant, have ch uh, many of them have changed. For example, right. the, the avenue of prayer. People under the Old Covenant prayed. They didn't pray in the name of Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Under the New Covenant we pray, but we pray in the name of Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Under the Old Covenant they sang. Right. They sang with the approval of God through the commandments of God to use the instrument of the Old Covenant. Right. But under the New Covenant we have the transition and the change right. and the command is to sing, right. but to only sing. Right, That's absolutely. Right. You know, I, I want to bring the Old Testament. They were Jews, Israelites. Mm -hmm. That's what the law of Moses was given to. Now today, I, I cannot be an Israelite. I can't mm -hmm. be a physical Jew. Uh, I, I have to be a uh, a Christian. Mm -hmm. I cannot be a, a spiritual Jew. Mm -hmm. Is what I'm saying, and, and worship Jehovah God as my Savior. I, because the Jews rejected Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, and if you try to go to the Old Testament and pull out an instrument of music and authorize it through the New, then you're just being a Jew. Mm -hmm. right. You're being a spiritual Jew. You rejected Jesus Christ. That's right. So, but I really want to end this whole thing off just real quick about uh, it was not even used until about 670 AD. That is what history records That's right. when Pope Battalion introduced it to the, uh, introduced the organs into some of the churches of the Western, in Western Europe. Now I want to ask you a question. Why would you want to be something or have something that the Roman Catholics was the first to start? It's an important right. point, Wes, because den denominationalists today uh, didn't, they did not even accept or embrace the no. instrument. Right, absolutely. No, not at all. They, they, it was rejected, there was split over it. That's right, That's right. it was split over it. Mm -hmm. Well friends, we, we want to thank you so very much for watching this program today and we hope and pray that, that you will examine what we have said. Go to our website, shieldoffaithtv.com and you can find the outline there for yourself uh, and some important points that was not made on this program in relation to this. If we can be of any help anyway, please contact us. But until next time, may God bless. Just think about it.